Allie, thank you so much for offering to uh, kick this off, our very first happy hour, which I think was a, a suggestion from John, actually, many months ago. I had never heard of an happy hour, so I think it's only fitting that was Santa it? Barbara folks would pick us, pick, kick us off. I, I believe yeah. so. You have an amazing memory, you see? I mean, I think you have a really good memory, but I don't, my memory doesn't go back then. But, but you know, I'm happy to be the creator of the name then. Yeah. And uh, so thank you for, for uh, giving us, you know, giving it a try and we'll see how this works out. So we have Allie who's going to demonstrate Swap Card and I've made you a co-host. And then John is also going to share uh, Jamboard and Padlet with uh, us. So I hope one, I can do a John's idea justice. Um, he, he is brilliant. So it's not surprising that he came up with the name. Um, and so there's kind of two parts that I'm going to show you of Swap Card. The first one is the conference that I attended that actually used the platform. So you can see once it's fully like put together what it looks like. And then I created a mock-up version of what it could look like for the Youth Summit. So you can see the kind of the behind the scenes and what the functionality is as creating the event. So this is the conference that I attended, which is Aztec. Um, and this is the, the homepage. And so they had the highest level of the, the, red, or the software that you could get. Um, so this is the paid version. Um, and so you have your own profile that you can make and you can go through and you can edit it and add as much information as you want into it, which is kind of nice. Um, and then it also lists the different activities that I attended. Um, and then they have all these different tabs. So my event is a list of the activities that I wanted to go see. So I went through the schedule and I said, I'm interested in this session. And so I clicked it and it added it and created my own itinerary for me in one place. So I didn't have to go back and look through the schedule each time. Um, and you can also schedule meetings. You can schedule, you can um, go and look and see who you've connected with, kind of like friends on Facebook almost. Um, and then they have the full-blown program, which this one was across multiple days. So you have each different day. And then anytime you want to add something to your personal schedule, you just click it. Um, and then it'll pop up over here of the list of everything that you have, as well as show you if there's anything that overlaps. Um, and there's like different um, keywords associated with it, as well as you can put information about all the different presenters and stuff. And um, if you were to click on each of them, it takes you to a page. So each of the sessions, um, this one was a presentation and discussion. So during the actual conference, this would have been a Zoom link that would take you to an external Zoom meeting. And all of these were recorded and then they were made for access afterwards. And we have access to these for, I think a year after the conference, which was kind of nice. And then there was also like a chat room that you could participate in, um, which was kind of cool. And then um, there was a poster session, um, which I know we've talked about this a little bit. The poster session function isn't the greatest um, because it is pretty much, I'm trying to find one that I know. So this is the one that we submitted in. And so what you do is you upload your poster and then people can go and download it. And so it pops up on the bottom as a PDF that you can then open and look at. Um, and so in terms of actually presenting, um, you have to like do extra work in order to be able to talk during the poster presentation. So this is a good place for sharing posters, but not for presenting posters. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And there was like a store, which I don't know if we want. And then all of the social media that was used um, got pulled into their links here. And so this links to, so this could be like the UC links website instead of Aztec, but that's their conference website. Um, in terms of the networking functionality that I liked about it, um, you could access a list of all of the different people that were present and then you could message them. So I just randomly reached out to a bunch of different people um, and wound up making some great professional connections through there. And then you have access to this 
Um, and then notifications are really easy as well. So that's that. In terms of what it would look like for us, yeah, the networking was good. Um, which of course the Zoom thing is in my way. So this is the thrown together one that I made for Youth Summit, just to see kind of how easy it was to put all of this together. Um, and it was really easy. So it's more or less like a drag and drop sort of user platform to put it together. Um, so you can pick what you want to show on the top. Um, there are a couple of things like the schedule that you are only included if you have the paid version rather than the free version. Um, and you literally just put everything that you want into it, um, like a fill in the blank. And then there's like quick links to all the different other sections. You can have documents available. If you wanted to have meetings, there's a whole section where you can set up like time slots. So each individual can be like, I'm free at this time to hang out. And then you can like click and request a meeting with that person, which was kind of cool. Um, and then they could say yes or no. Um, and then the, the messaging system. Uh, yes, the next thing. Um, so, so can, can we um, sort of ask uh, clarifying questions before you get further on? So this yes. is, so this is the, I, so swap card allows for you to select what kinds, could you go to the, like the main, uh, all those options? like uh, posters and, okay, yeah. So it gives you an option of how you want to navigate in a space, yeah. um, which I can see this, I don't know what you're, um, Mara and Carla, what you guys are thinking about for the UC Lynx conference, like the main conference, but this might be something you might want to try out for just the regular UC Lynx conference. I don't know, depending on how we're going to congregate. Um, but for the kids, so the kids, so the difference between the free and the full version is that there's inserted advertisements in the free version. No, what was the difference? So some of these options are not there. Oh, so I see. Okay. The free version, you can have the networking options, all the information, um, emails, the registration can be through this, this portal um as well as support but then you get like the schedule and these extra the widgets so um like the the poster palooza type of widget that is something that you have to pay for to include okay all right that's that's thank you but you, but you said the poster palooza wasn't that fantastic anyway right mm -hmm. no i i did not enjoy it <laughs> yeah um so um, it makes me wonder, <clears throat> sorry, I think like usability wise is kind of helpful for regular, more senior um, conferences, right? Like I can see this working for conferences like AERA that have multiple sessions and people are wondering how the heck to organize um, their calendar based on their preferences and networking, which is amazing as well. And I think it's kind of cool that you have that kind of like directory and you can just like search for people that you're like find some kind of like um, similar interest. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder how this would work usability wise, like user friendly wise with kids, like having them registering for decisions they want, or it makes me wonder how this would work for Youth Summit itself, because I can see this working for, let's say the Youth Links conference. Although the Youth Link conference is not that big enough that it's easy to navigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, even though I know that this last year um, we uh, added the, the different sessions with like storytelling and other uh, different rooms with different activities. So that could be it, but it's not that big. So people, it's easy to navigate it. So it makes me wonder, again, I'm like going off topic. Uh, how do you guys, especially you, Ali, that you used it already, how do you see uh, kids using this app like do you see do you think it's like very user friendly for kids or do you see themselves registering for uh, sessions they want to attend because that will be the the main purpose of considering this app for um, um for the youth summit mm -hmm. yeah no that's that's a great point um so 
my understanding and knowledge of the U summit is coming from what we had originally planned to do at UCSB. And so I was thinking the different tables that we had said each group was going to have set up with their activities that they were going to lead would be different sessions. And so that would, that would be where the, the sessions come from. Um, in terms of usability of the platform, um, I thought it was pretty intuitive accessing the schedule. Um, the networking opportunities was a little bit more difficult to, to navigate. Um, but what I did like about this conference is that they had a like pre-conference session where they demonstrated how to use the software. And then you were put into groups with a, a conference coordinator who was like your go-to person throughout the entire conference and like reached out to make sure that you were doing okay and you were good, um, which was kind of nice to be able to, to have that area of support. Um, I think, cause we had discussed last time we met having like an adult in charge of each group of youngins. Right. Um, so as an adult, I, I thought this was like super easy to navigate. Um, younger ones. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I also have a, a, a lot of faith in youth and their ability to yeah. help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We could also um, offer like video tutorials that they can link to, like this is how you can navigate if we decided on this space. Mara had a good question. What, how many people um, were at this conference that you used uh, card swap with, you know? I can look it up really fast. I want to say there was a couple thousand. Well, that's, uh, that, that works. Oh, wow, that, that, that's a big number. Is there a limitation yeah. uh, when it comes to that amount of user with the free version of it? Mm. Yes, there was. I think if, I mean, I think, if, you know, it could be the kind of thing where if, if we were going to use it, that we, it might be worth, you uh, see, could potentially pay for yeah. it. Yeah. So what's the price to work within constraints? Right. What, what would be the price for the license, Ali? Um, so we would have to get a quote because it depends on the number of attendees that you have, but it would oh, be okay. no more than $7 per attendee. And sometimes they have deals with UC, $7. Okay. And sometimes no, they have deals hard. with with UCs also. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You can wheel but a it, deal. Yeah. <laughs> but it does seem like it's, I mean, I could imagine um, like something like AERA or something using this. And I love that um, because that's always like the thing right is like trying to keep like where am I going now like I had a hard time with that in person right you know, yeah. like, where's my little where's my little schedule of where I'm going next and what what session am I going to um mm -hmm. and so there is definitely a benefit to having that built in could you show us that feature again Allie the schedule piece Mara are you talking like including the for the youth links conference as well um I'm just kind of thinking broadly yeah yeah um yeah, I mean, I think I'm just not sure, you know, I just feel like there's always these trade-offs, like either learning a new technology, you know, depending on how much time we'll be spending with it, you know, versus what the, what the trade-offs are. Um, I mean, I can see it makes sense for like, you know, multiple day, how many days was this conference? Three. Okay. Yeah, so a multiple day conference with multiple sessions and tons of people, like it seems like this is an awesome, I like the sloth cam. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it sounds awesome. It was an actual, let's see if they still have it up. I do like the list of this is what's happening on this day. Come and check it out. Like that seems good. I'm wondering if we could, it would be nice to add, if we can edit sort of iconic I'm just, I, I think that especially for our young um, participants, it'd be nice to have like some graphical, v visual graphics to help orient um, the, the names of, of what's happening. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if we can do that. I can go check and see. Uh, looks like it's mostly just title. 
Most, yeah. That that's one thing. Is I'm just thinking, like maybe for our, our younger ones. Like maybe this is great for grades five on up. But maybe for the younger guys, mm -hmm. there we could suggest. I'm just not sure how that would work with like I'm trying to think of it like because doesn't Amy work with Amy Bitoff? Doesn't she work with like six year olds? Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. I mean, I think there's plenty of programs that yeah have much younger kids for sure. So how would a six year old navigate this? Well, I wonder. I want. I'm kind of thinking of it. Um, maybe accompanying parents. I don't know. Let's, uh, yeah. Or, or maybe if you know, maybe if it's too much to introduce a new piece of technology, what are the pieces? Can we look at this piece of technology? Like, what are the pieces that we really like about this? And are there yeah. things that we can um, emulate in Zoom? Or like, if we need to create a, a schedule, you know, do we create a Google Doc, you know, mm -hmm. or a Google Sheet or something that has pictures in it? Like, what are the, what are the important pieces here that um that that you really liked and that were super functional that even if we didn't use this technology yeah. per se we would want to incorporate into either um the uc links meeting or the youth summit meeting i think especially because we know that yeah yeah just because we're going to have to be adaptive especially for the younger kids mm -hmm. sorry what were you gonna yeah say? and they we know that the students will have a a lot of experience even the six-year-olds in google classroom right and in zoom so they'll know yeah, they're those gonna two. be zoom experts mm -hmm. they're gonna be zoom experts so to use their expertise would be good but I, I like the idea that maybe a google doc is like a pdf as you say um mara with like hyperlinks so go to this mm. zoom uh, link and then that has a chat room of full of people so that maybe we have different zoom sessions that are um, coordinated by different site leaders um, for different activities happening in parallel and also throughout the day so maybe google doc like a pdf can you do um a, um a, a, you can do a, hyperlinks and pdfs yeah thank you okay yep. good yes yes cool I mean, another option, I like this idea of using what they're already familiar with, the Zoom and the Google Docs. Yeah. Um, since I know, Mari, you brought it up in an email thread of GatherTown is also a really um, user-friendly platform, especially for young kids, because it is structured like a video game, which is fabulous. I'm trying to get in a couple of demos of software um, that we could potentially be using for the UC Links um, conference. Uh, to so people might um, have a little familiarity. People meaning me um, <laughs> says I need to be able to evaluate these and see if they're things we want to use. Also, um, but I have heard some good things about Gather Town. The input that I heard, um, I think from Devin and then from somebody else, Sandy at Irvine used it. Um, is that it might be especially good for something like a poster session or like a social hour where you can actually like kind of bump into people and like start talking to them, but maybe not great, a great platform for a whole conference. Mm. So, um, but I think maybe that's kind of the lens that we want to take as we're evaluating all of these things is like, even if we're not using this piece of software per se, I mean, maybe we can and maybe we should, but what are the pieces of it that, um, that really afford us, um, you know, great connections or ability to um, organize ourselves better or whatever, whatever piece that is about the software, I guess.